you, but let's get our first con co corporate conversation off the block as well. And the company we're looking at right now is Sula Vineyards. Now, Sula has launched three new luxury villas in Nashik at their properties. And in other news, Kotak has initiated coverage on the stock with an ad rating and a target price of 500, which actually is not too far away from where the stock is right now. It's close to 470, Kotak saying 500. Stock has had a fantastic rally. I mean, the, the chart says it all, 42% in the last three months. Rajiv Samant, MD and CEO at Sula Vineyards is joining in. Rajiv, good morning. A great to talk wine first thing in the morning, right? I'm all for it. But, uh, you know... Absolutely. Um, good morning. <laughs> that's on a lighter note. But uh, I found that announcement pretty interesting of you launching more properties, uh, you know, uh, at your lands in Nasik. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Right now, if I look at it uh, as a, you know, year basis, your wine tourism business is about 9-10% of the total revenue. And I think that is where the hospitality part pretty much goes in. Now, with the launch of these three new properties, what's the intent? I mean, do you want to go to a 30-40, uh, a 30-70 mix, a 40-60 mix? What's the long-term trajectory? And in the short term, what are occupancy levels looking like? What are uh, average rates looking like? Because we know hospitality has been booming and how? So this is a terrific business for us, uh, an extremely profitable business. And this is really the place where we introduce so many Indians to wine for the first time. Uh, you might be aware that uh, our vineyard is the most visited vineyard in the world, very possibly. Um, and last year, we had about 120,000 unique individual tastings there. So really expanding the wine universe. Um, you know, when you say that hospitality is 10% of our revenue, what that masks is the wine sales that we do there, which actually appears um, in our accounts in our regular wine sales, which adds another 5 or 6%. So really, the entire wine tourism business, including the wine we sell on site, is more like 16 or 17%. Now, our overall business is growing in strong double digits. So I don't necessarily see hospitality reaching 30%. But as you know, it's so difficult to get a room in our resorts uh, on the weekend. It's it's so successful. It's 100% occupancy most weekends. So we really needed these new villas. And these days, you know, villas, luxury villas, beautiful view, heated pool. This is what people are looking for. We already had one, which is a huge success. You can never get room there. So I, we thought it was time to add a few more. Many more options for those of you who want to visit Nasik and can never find, um, you know, the, the occupancy. So we have about 100% occupancy on weekends, probably more like about 60% uh, during the week, which lands us up anywhere a nice 80% plus occupancy generally. Rajiv, uh, we are still waiting for that invitation to the CNBC team that you promised us for. It hasn't come through uh, just yet. It's an open I'm in. invitation. I'm you have to give in. me the date. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm the wrong audience because I'm a teetotaler. But yeah, you have you have a lot of the others who can perhaps uh, you know come and uh, get their money's worth there. Uh, you know, I, when we spoke to you the last time around, you said that premiumization is a big theme for you now, and that's a big growth trigger as well for the company. Tell us a little bit about that. What is the scope that you see in, you know, higher priced wines in terms of how much could it contribute to your overall business? And uh, does it bring about some margin levers as well? Can you do better margins in FY24? So Sula has really been concentrating on our premium business. We consider our premium as being wines in uh, priced in Maharashtra at 700 rupees plus. We call those our premium and then elite segment, which is a thousand rupees plus. That has been growing far faster than our overall business. So if you take a look at um, over a four year period, every year around 100 basis points is being added onto the premium and elite. So it's about 400 basis points more, 500 basis points more over the last four years. And that much is, is the less the share of the uh, economy and popular category. So Indians are drinking more wine, of course. Uh, and more and more, they are happy to reach for a 1,000 rupee, a 1,200 rupee uh, bottle of well-made Indian wine. And of course, Sula leads the pack with our new source range, which is a huge hit, especially with the rosé. Um, considered possibly India's uh, best rosé wine, the source rosé. And then our rasa range of very... Um, fine high-end red. So the Rasa Cabernet Sauvignon is one of our fastest growing uh, wines today in our portfolio. Rajiv, you're already making me uh, get into weekend mode. I mean, uh, there's so many names coming up and uh, so many different ideas coming up. But sorry, before I hand it over to uh, Prashant, uh, just to go back to the first point, the hospitality revenue right now is 10%. Let's leave the wine sales out of it. I mean, let's just stick to hospitality, you know, wine sales separately. Uh, how much will that 10% go up? Now, you've launched three new properties. Given the pricing, 
Uh, that 10 percent becomes what 11, 12 percent this year. And uh, what does that mean for the margins, uh, given that these are premium properties commanding, I think, uh, top of the line rates? Yes, so you should see a couple hundred basis points uh, uh, up, um, be it in our uh, tourism business, not including the wine, which is another, uh, you know, as I said, another 500, 600 basis points. And yes, this is a much higher margin business for us, and it's an asset light business. So these villas, Sula has not um, put in the capex to construct them. We have our business partners in Nasik who put in the capex, who, who build them for us. And then we um, lease those and we operate them. And you can say we put in the wine software. That's really what we do. Uh, we do not intend to really become a big hotel and hospitality business. Wine is our main aim. And you know that we dominate this business and there's tremendous runway for growth ahead in India. You know, we see this as the most exciting market for growth in wine over the next decade in the world. You know, that's what we're really looking at. That's what we are on the, on the cusp of here. And our resorts are a way to enable people to come yeah. to the vineyards and to taste wine in their original element as they were meant to be tasted. That's yeah. really what we are looking for here. We are not uh, aiming to uh, compete with the likes of uh, Taj and, and Oberoi or even Saffron Stays or Lohono. All right, got it. Uh, and uh, that'll be, I think, a relief to uh, them. <laughs> uh, Rajiv, hi, good morning. Uh, you know, I have a, a simple uh, question. A uh, very basic question, uh, for, for my understanding, and maybe uh, helps investors as well. So you you did 500 about uh, 550 crores in revenues in F523, uh, right? Uh, does the amount of land that you need to, you know, which which uh, grows the grapes, which uh, you make into wine, I mean, for 550 crores to go to say 1100 crores, does the land under cultivation also need to double, uh, or or it's not uh, linear in that sense? It absolutely needs to double, but I want to just point out that we have pretty much an infinite supply of wine. So just take Maharashtra, there are something like one lakh hectares of grapes. Now, most of those are table grapes, but wherever you grow table grapes, there you can also grow wine grapes. And Maharashtra doesn't have more than 1,500 hectares of wine grapes at this point. So we're talking about only one and a half percent of the overall grape acreage is wine grapes. So there's a huge runway Every time one of these table grape vineyards, you know, the farmers, they, it comes up for replanting. They always approach us and say, ask us, is there any scope to replant some of this acreage with uh, wine grapes? So right now, in fact, we have more demand for planting our vineyards than we can actually allocate the uh, supply. And of course, we, we don't have any of our own vineyards. Again, we have an asset light model in terms of vineyards and viticulture. Our, our farmers are our partners. The grape growers of Maharashtra and Karnataka, they are the ones who plant for us. And we have a lot of farmers very excited and very willing to plant for us. Right. Rajiv, uh, so uh, so you're saying that land is not a problem at all? I mean, uh, it'll... Uh, you... Not at all. One lakh hectares of uh, table grapes. You know that uh, Maharashtra is one of the top grape-growing regions yeah. in the world. And, it, and, and it you, you need wine charge. grapes? You need wine grapes to make wine or you can use other grapes to make wine as well? So you can use uh, the, the table grapes, your regular Thompson seedless, etc., to make the cheaper wines, you know, where you don't necessarily have to give the complexity. People are just okay. looking for a nice sort of innocuous, uh, sweet tasting wine. Mm. So our wines that cost less than 600 rupees are mostly made from table grapes. And that gives us a huge advantage because that is, you know, there's about uh, sure. 10,000 times the supply that we actually need. It's open oh, market. Sure. Uh, Rajiv, sorry to interrupt you. We're, uh, due to paucity of time, I just want to squeeze in one last question. The last time we spoke with you, you said that you are looking to reduce the promoter pledges. I think 10% of the 28% held by promoters is pledged as on March. Uh, any plans to do that in FY24? Um, you know, I got to say that uh, I, I don't I don't have the exact answer to this, but for sure the, the promoter pledge is not going to go up. We're going to be talking to our bankers and financiers soon to ask them to bring it down. Uh, given the, the stock performance of Sula, there's no need for that uh, pledge to be that high. Okay, all right. We'll leave it at that, Rajiv. Thanks a lot for joining in. Appreciate your thoughts and all the best uh, with your wine tourism business and, uh, you know, the way forward for overall Sula vineyards as well. Let's do one thing. Let us uh, take a quick commercial break on that note. On the other side of the break, we'll get the pre-opening rates and we'll try and get you some more stocks that are in the news. Stay tuned.